Hello animal lovers, in today's video I will discuss about the history of dogs. Have you ever wondered how dogs came to be man's best friend? Well to answer that, we need to take a journey back in time, way back, to an era when humans were still perfecting the art of the campfire barbecue. The story of dogs begins between 20,000 to 40,000 years ago. But hold on, our furry friends weren't dogs back then, they were wolves. Yes, you heard it right, wolves. The very creatures that make us shiver in those spooky movies were the ancestors of our beloved pooches. Now you might be wondering how did we get from fearsome wolves to friendly Fidos? The answer lies in a process called domestication. You see, wolves and humans lived in close proximity, hunting the same game and inevitably crossing paths. Over time, some wolves became less afraid of humans, and humans likewise, grew less afraid of these particular wolves. This is where the story takes a twist. Picture this. A group of early humans, huddled around a campfire, cooking their day's hunt. The aroma wafts through the air, reaching the nostrils of our wolf friends. Now wolves aren't known to resist a good meal, and these humans seem to be excellent cooks. So, the wolves started hanging around, drawn by the tantalizing smells of human cooking. The humans, in turn, found these wolves useful for alerting them to danger or helping them hunt. It was a win-win situation. The wolves got food, and the humans got an early warning system. Over generations these friendly wolves started to change. They became smaller, their ears floppier, their tails curlier. They started to look more like the dogs we know and love today. This transformation was likely a result of selective breeding by humans, favoring traits that made these wolves more manageable and useful. And that's how it happened. The fearsome wolves became the adorable, tail-wagging creatures we can't live without. So, dogs became our companions, not just because they're cute, but because they're smart opportunists. But how did these opportunistic wolves become our lovable, tail-wagging friends? It's a question that's puzzled many a pet owner as they've looked into the eyes of their devoted canine companion. The answer lies in the ancient relationship between dogs and humans, a bond that has evolved over tens of thousands of years. Picture it. Early humans living in small survivalist communities come across packs of wolves. Now these weren't your ordinary wolves, these were the opportunistic sort, the ones keenly aware that where humans went, leftovers followed. As time went on, these wolves became more and more comfortable around humans, they began to help with hunting, using their keen senses to track down prey. In return, humans provided them with food and shelter, a mutualistic relationship that benefited both parties. You see, humans quickly realized the value of these four-legged companions. Not only were they excellent hunting partners, but they also offered protection, companionship, and yes, even a form of early garbage disposal. But let's not forget one of the most important reasons we humans might have liked having dogs around. They're great listeners, and they never talk back. Imagine coming home after a hard day of, well, surviving, and having a friend who's all ears and no judgment. Rover, you won't believe the mammoth that got away today. And Rover just wags his tail, his eyes saying, I'm here for you, human. Over time this relationship deepened. Dogs were no longer just partners in hunting or survival, they became part of the human family. They shared our homes, our food and even our emotions. And so, it was that dogs evolved from being our hunting partners to our most trusted confidants. They've been with us through thick and thin, offering unwavering loyalty and companionship. Their journey from opportunistic wolves to man's best friend is a testament to the power of friendship and mutual respect. So the next time you look into your dog's eyes, remember, you're not just looking at a pet. You're looking at a creature that's been with us, supporting us, loving us, for thousands of years. And that's how dogs went from being our hunting partners to our silent furry therapists. Ever wondered why there are so many different breeds of dogs? Well, let's dive right into it. You see, it all started with our ancestors who began to selectively breed dogs for specific traits. Wait, what, you might ask? People were breeding dogs like they were curating a playlist? Well, kind of. You see, back in the day, people realized that dogs, just like humans, had a wide range of skills and traits. Some dogs were fast runners, others were good at sniffing out things, while some were perfect for companionship. So, humans decided to play a game of mix and match. They started breeding dogs with specific traits together to get a custom-made dog breed. It's like going to a restaurant and creating your own pizza with toppings of your choice. Only here, the toppings were traits and the pizza was a dog breed. This selective breeding led to the emergence of different breeds we see today. Over time we ended up with a smorgasbord of dog breeds, 
each with its own unique characteristics. And it didn't stop there. The desire for novelty and specialization kept pushing the boundaries of breeding, leading to more and more distinct breeds. Now imagine being at a dog version of a fashion show. The runway is filled with breeds of all shapes and sizes, each strutting their stuff with their unique traits on full display. The small but mighty Chihuahua sashays down, followed by the elegant and poised Afghan Hound. The audience, aka the humans, are picking out their favorites, deciding which breed suits their lifestyle, or simply which one they think is the cutest. So in essence, the wide variety of dog breeds we have today is all thanks to our ancestors who played matchmaker, and our continued fascination with these wonderful creatures. It's a never-ending fashion show with new breeds making their debut on the doggy runway every now and then. So from the smallest Chihuahua to the largest Great Dane, they're all runway models in the world of dogs. Why does your poodle act like a queen while your neighbor's bulldog acts like a grumpy old man? You see, every dog breed has its unique personality traits, and it's not just about being a good boy or a naughty girl, it's about the genetic coding, the breed's history, and the environment they grow up in. Going back in time, our ancestors bred dogs for specific jobs. Terriers were designed to hunt and dig out prey, hence their tenacious and energetic nature. The regal and aloof demeanor of a poodle? Well, they were initially bred as water retrievers, and their fancy haircut wasn't just a fashion statement, it was a practical way to keep their joints warm while they fetched waterfowl from icy waters. Hence, their sense of dignity and pride. The bulldog, with their furrowed brows and grumpy expression, was originally bred for bull baiting. Even though they've left their aggressive past behind and are now quite the cuddle bugs, they still carry that grumpy old man energy. And it's not just about the breed's history. Dogs, like us, are greatly influenced by their environment. A dog that's been socialized well, treated kindly, and trained properly will exhibit a completely different personality from one that's been neglected or mistreated. Just like people, dogs are products of nature and nurture. Remember the old saying, dogs are man's best friend? Well, it's not just because they're loyal or because they're excellent at fetching newspapers, it's because they're as complex and diverse as we are, with their unique personalities and quirks. Here's a little joke for you. Why did the dog sit in the shade? Because he didn't want to be a hot dog. And just like that joke, some dogs might have better personalities than some people we know. So, next time you see your poodle strutting around like she owns the place or your bulldog looking grumpy on the couch, remember they're just being true to their unique doggy selves. Remember, no matter their personality, every dog deserves to be treated like royalty. Ever wondered why our best friends don't stick around as long as we'd like them to? It's a question that has tugged at the heartstrings of dog lovers for generations. Dogs, unfortunately, have shorter lifespans compared to us humans. But why is that? Well, one reason is their size. There's a peculiar trend in the canine world where smaller breeds often outlive their larger counterparts. The mighty Great Dane, for instance, lives about 7 to 10 years, while a petite Chihuahua might reach up to 17 years. It's like some bizarre inverse law of longevity. Breed plays a significant role too. Purebred dogs, while they might be the epitome of their breed's characteristics, have a smaller gene pool. This can make them more susceptible to certain health issues that can affect their lifespan. On the other hand, our lovable mutts with a mix of different breeds in their lineage can often live longer due to their diverse genetic makeup. Overall, health is another crucial factor. Just like us, dogs that lead active, healthy lifestyles with a balanced diet and regular vet checkups generally live longer. So those daily walks and fetch sessions aren't just fun, they're adding years to your furry friend's life. But here's a comforting thought. Dogs with their wagging tails and adoring eyes seem to have a unique perspective on life. They live in the moment, not worrying about the past or the future. Every belly rub, every treat, every good boy or good girl is the best thing that's ever happened to them. They don't count years, they count moments, and they make every single one of them count with their boundless love and loyalty. So even though their time with us might be short, dogs sure know how to make every moment count. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like and subscribe. Have a wonderful day everyone.